Welcome to the World Congress of Cardiometabolic Medicine 2019 held in Mumbai. What a pleasant honor. I have a very esteemed and a distinguished guest with me, Dr. Pankaj Manoria. Well, what should I say here about him? I know him from my medical school days, so it's an absolute pleasure to, to, to have you here again on Thank the you. same platform. Uh, Dr. Pankaj Manoria, he's a director of the Manoria um, uh, Medical Center and he's an interventionist cardiologist. I don't think he need any more introduction. He has been editor for so many journals in the past and present as well. He continued to do his all the good work and I think I will straight away jump to the question and start asking from him. And, and I was listening to your talks very inquisitively today about uh, Aspen a day, a keep a doctor away. Would you like to enlighten us, like, is it a myth or the reality? Just walk us through about your search today. Aspen, no doubt, is a wonder drug. Yeah. It has been used since years for prevention, for preventing cardiovascular events, for preventing stroke. But all these data were more for secondary prevention. For primary prevention, we didn't have many, much robust data. But in spite of that, aspirin was being used as a drug, over-the-counter drug, for primary prevention of any cardiovascular events. But lastly, almost uh, hardly three, four months back, three trials came, all three starting from A. Aspirin, Arrive and Ascent. Huh. That's and these three theory. trials, in fact, dig the graveyard for aspirin as a primary preventive agent. Because in all these trials, what they found was when aspirin was used in healthy individuals who didn't have any risk factors or any cardiovascular symptoms, almost 20,000 patients they studied. And what they found was using aspirin didn't reduce any uh, major adverse cardiovascular event. And on the contrary, the bleeding events, the intracranial bleeds, the GI bleeds, and other major or minor bleeds, they were significantly more. So you are doing more harm than good by giving just aspirin in healthy individuals. So aspirin, no doubt, is a drug in a patient who had already had a myocardial infarction. Yes, you have to give for lifelong. But in, a, in, in an individual who didn't have any event, any vascular event, just writing aspirin, I think you will be doing more harm than good. That's true. So we have been hearing about a lot about the primary prevention and secondary prevention. So I think with this all three ATRAs, we reached to a kind of conclusion that secondary prevention is always far better than the primary yeah, exactly. intervention. Yeah. So, so like uh, we have been discussing a lot about the exact dosage and the duration of the antiplatelet drug. Okay. Uh, you know, so there have always been a confusion among so many cardiologists and as well as among the physicians. So, so go down against uh, the general physician yeah. and all. Post stenting, how long is the adequate duration for the antiplatelet drug? Post, if you have implanted a drug eluting stents, I think minimum one year you should give DAPT. If you have implanted a bare metal stent, they say six weeks are more than enough. If you have done only POBA, that's meaning with yeah. angioplasty without stenting, a four week dual antiplatelet is sufficient. But aspirin you have to give lifelong as a secondary preventive agent. And what is your drug of choice as well as a second add on antiplatelet therapy? Do you prefer clopidogrel, ticagrel, or prasugrel, and what's your, if what's your drug of choice? If the thrombotic risk is high in a patient, I'll prefer either a prasugrel or a ticagrel. If I'm uh, handling a patient who has a low thrombotic risk, clopidogrel is sufficient. Does your choice of antiplatelet changes depending on the complexity of the lesion, or you still... Definitely. That's, if I'm a standard drug in the left main, or a proximal ED, I would prefer a newer agents like ticagrel or a prasugrel. And if it's a simple angioplasty, I think clopidogrel is sufficient. And do you think there are more adverse reactions or may, more, more chances of bleeding with the newer antiplatelet Definitely. agent? It's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. Is a double so it's sword, always no like very difficult. If the age is more than 75, there. if you are lean, thin patients, you see CKD, old females, lean females, elderly age groups, CKDs, I don't, give a, I don't prefer these newer agents. You know, that's the kind of a very complex conundrum when you have the atrial fibrillation and the ischemic heart disease yeah. and you have to kind of find a right balance between the anti-thrombotic yeah, therapy. Yeah. And I never found, I, I'm sure you must have yeah. experienced the same thing. Every time when I have this antiplatelet yeah. therapy with the anticoagulants, and, yeah. I'm always scared and take a step back and think myself whether I'm yeah, doing a true justice to the patient or not. And what are your thoughts like? Yeah, do you prefer uh, the vitamin K with the newer antiplatelet yeah. or, or just a NOAC with newer antiplatelet? Think, yeah, yeah. That's a very uh, pertinent question and that's a tricky situation. Because exactly. if you add a triple, if you give triple antithrombotic, they say the bleeding risk increased three times as compared to the dual antiplatelet. So what I do in my practice and what the evidence has shown, I omit one antiplatelet. I omit okay. aspirin. Okay. okay. I give this either vitamin K antagonist plus uh, single day, either clopidogrel okay. or if they have been studied with NOAX also, yeah, like yeah. the new August trial, this have come right. and there was a, a little atlas, Timmy, ACS, there were a few trials with NOAX also. Yeah, yeah. In that, 
a simple no x agent plus a single antiplatelet is more than sufficient i think that's the carry home yeah. message yeah. would you like to summarize your talks in two three sentences what should the carry home message for the people who are watching us today for those who are not very intense uh, knowledge yeah. about the antithrombotic therapy carry home message which i want to give is aspirin is a wonder drug but it should be given only for as a agent to prevent secondary events it is not a drug which should be uh, prescribed one and all for every patient just with the intention of preventing a, a primary event so you have to be individualized once you'll give aspirin as an agent to prevent any it's a kind of the customized treatment yeah, it's a you customized. have to look at it's the patient adult. profile yeah, it's not look at the patient profile and make a sense of a sensible so decision so aspirin a day keeps a doctor away i think it's a myth not a reality thank, thank you, you very much thank that you. was absolute pleasure thank talking you. to dr pankaj thanks thank a lot you.